jump uh, now to meet our guest. His name is Pastor Moses Kashugi. Karibu sana to the show. Sante. <laughs> Great to have you here today. Right. And uh, we're going to be talking about why scorekeeping is killing your relationship. Often in, in relationships, we have this attitude of, what have you done for me lately? Or, but last time I'm the one who, whatever, or I'm always the one who's doing X, Y, Z, or yeah. contributing A, B, C. Yes. And so you find that your relationship slowly starts to get to a place where you're doing things for your spouse only if they've done it back for you. Yes. And that's dangerous territory, isn't it? Very. And it's the expectations we put on uh, one another. So if it's a husband, you have this expectation <laughs> that because I bought you a car yesterday, uh, and we can have sex the whole of this week. Mm. So if she doesn't do that, you feel disappointed. Mm. It's because your motive, even for the gift you gave, was attached to something. The other day I was talking with my wife and you're saying, I'm doing this, but no strings attached. Mm -hmm. This is purely from my heart. <laughs> because you don't want to make someone feel manipulated. Yeah. I am not doing this to manipulate you. You know, you can manipulate lovingly. Mm -hmm. I can decide today I'm cooking for my wife because I don't have to get tired because I want something else mm. in the evening. Mm. That's a bit manipulative. We need to look at things like the way Jesus <coughs> or our father did, that he gave his son mm. without make, forcing us and saying everybody must get saved. Right. He says, whoever is willing, I have given you the gift. Mm. So I'm giving you this gift of love. And it's not that I truly expect you to do something back for me. So this keeping scores of the things we've done for each other, it, 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 it brings in a sense of manipulation, which is not healthy for the relationship. Do whatever you're doing out of love. Right whatever you feel led to do for your spouse or your children, like even with our children, you do nice things to them. Do mm. you expect them, tell them, I bought for you candy yesterday, yesterday <laughs> I paid your school fees, mm -hmm. so please wash the house. Mm. You know, we shouldn't do that to one another. Yeah. It really affects the mood, the excitement, and people do feel manipulated. Right. Mm. And I guess that brings out then that a true relationship really is about that sacrificial love. Yes. Because it's you, you're doing it without expecting anything. You're not back expecting in anything, and if you do get it <clears throat> back, well and good, but don't use that to get something back because you might be very disappointed, especially for couples in a relationship. If that is how you taught one another, mm. then there will always be this standard you're trying to meet. Mm. I have to work hard to do this because I know my wife will do this for me or my husband will do this for me, and it's always about. Uh, it, it even brings in a sense of competition. Mm. that you're trying to outdo one another who is taking out uh, the other one more, who is buying more gifts. It is. It looks good to outsiders, you get. But, but between the two of you, it's, it's not touched <laughs> on real things. It's on substances. It's on material things. If your relationship is truly tested, then you will not stand the test of time in a long time. When the gifts run out, when the money maybe runs out, when you can no longer maybe take your spouse out as you used to do before, like now with COVID and mm. all these challenges, then you you ask yourself, so why were you doing these things to me before? Mm. Is it because you had the money? Mm. Is it because then I was young, now I'm old, I'm no longer <coughs> attractive, so you don't do the things you used to do for me then. And maybe I can't give you back what you used to expect from me. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And maybe then, because you've mentioned already competition, maybe we can talk about some of the other sort of negative traits that this keeping score business in a relationship actually brings out, you know, between partners. Yeah. There's also the other side, <laughs> apart from the good things, where you do good things, mm -hmm. you can also keep scores in terms of offenses. So your spouse offended you yesterday. They asked for forgiveness. Two weeks later, you're there reminding them, but I forgive you two weeks ago over the same thing. Right. So... If you're always remembering, you know, there's the one, the one we've discussed before, you are using the good, mm. but also you can use the bad. Mm. You're always remembering what they did to you and what they didn't do to you two years ago. What that does to that relationship, it brings a lot of tension. Mm -hmm. And then people do feel like they have to perform. I know that as a human being, uh, uh, let's say for me, for example, I can say maybe I have a problem with anger. Mm. So last week I got angry and I asked for forgiveness. When I asked for forgiveness, I didn't, it didn't mean that I would never do it again. Mm -hmm. I was just acknowledging that I have a problem, but it doesn't mean next week I may not be angry again. Mm. 
I might need your forgiveness again. Okay. So you don't keep reminding me, but I forgive you for the same thing. You know, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still working on this thing. Nobody is perfect. Okay. Let's not put these high expectations on one another that we are not able to meet. Okay. If I'm not able to come home every day at seven, uh, that, that is my thing I'm working on. So uh, when couples remind one another of these um, offenses and stuff, it really affects even the joy. Mm. The joy is, is, is taken away from that um, relationship. And then there's always a, a lack of, uh, of, of compassion. Mm. Because and even if I come to you, you won't forgive me. Right. Or even if I come to you, you remind me what I did yesterday. Yeah. Everybody is working on their weaknesses. Some change, some never change. True. If someone is changing, we bless the Lord. Mm. If someone has decided that's how they are going to live, uh, I think you have to learn now to forgive every day. Yeah. As Jesus taught us that forgive 77 times because someone will always offend you. And your spouse will be the best person to offend you every day because you are living with them every day. Mm. Yes. And in many ways, I guess also... Um, the whole idea of keeping score in relationships, it's already biased. It is. Even the score card, score measure, score yes. system, scoring yes. system yeah. is already biased and unfair because there's many other things that we just cannot track, good and bad. But also, everyone has a different scoring system because yes. it is your opinion, it is your objectiveness yes. or unobjectiveness um, uh, to it. And so... There'd be many factors that would sort of be associated with trying to really measure if your partner is being good <laughs> to you. What do you use? We, yes. Yeah, what do you use? People have different love languages. So to one person, he may not be good because, you know, he's not buying you lavish gifts. Yes. But the one who is receiving lavish gifts is jealous of you because your partner is actually there. Yes. He's giving you time. <laughs> True. And, and then we, f we, we tend to compare our relationships with others. Mm -hmm. I saw what Wahiga did to Joyce, so let me go do that to my wife. You might be surprised. For my wife, she doesn't like flowers. Mm. So if I take to her flowers because I saw someone else taking flowers and she's not happy, yeah. I'll be like, man. It doesn't matter. No, her love language is different. Maybe it's chocolate mm -hmm. or something else. So even understanding one another's um, love language is very, very important. Sure. Because that's how they interpret your love for them. Okay. For somebody else, just being home on time, that, that that's their gift. Means a lot. Yeah. That's their gift because there's a husband who never turns up. Even with COVID, they always have a reason to be late. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't compare yourself with another family. Okay. Work out your own. Work out your own garden. And, and, and you know, couples know each other. Mm -hmm. Even if we were to pretend to outsiders, couples do know each other. They know what works out for them and what doesn't. All right. Yes. Well, I want us to take a break right now. And um, when we come back, we're going to be continuing with this discussion. You can send in your questions to double two triple nine. Uh, you can also reach us on Facebook at Switch TV Kenya. And uh, even maybe we'll talk about then what to do when sort of, because you've said, you know, give people a chance to sort of learn. But if you've been giving them many chances. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> and they're not graduating. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with this person? They repeat the class. They keep repeating the class. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? Double yes. two triple nine is the SMS line. Stay tuned. guys welcome back to full circle with joyce here with pastor moses and we're talking about uh keeping score in relationships and uh there's some messages that have come in uh of course um relating to this topic so let me just read a few uh, as we begin trying to address these um someone here says hey joyce relationship scorekeeping is not really healthy i broke up with my boyfriend a while back and he asked me to return all the gifts <laughs> One by one. <laughs> one. All the gifts he has ever bought and told guy and told me I was an investment. <laughs> hey Mayo. Yeah. That's rough. That, that is just that tells you everything he did. That's petty. He though. Had an that, that's on it. That's kind of petty. He had an expectation that was not. It's an so investment. It's an investment. It's business. So if I'm not getting the profits. What's the purpose of the yeah, business? Yeah, kitu, account two, more than billion. Hey, that's that's kind of petty. That's why people do prenups because so that in case we divorce, we don't have arguments. 
That's petty though. Oh my goodness. Okay, um mwingine amesema Gotea Pasi is a blessing especially his book. My trust was broken once and I have tried to trust again but I can't. What do I do? Another says, "Hey Joyce, thanks for the discussion. To be honest, what you're saying is not realistic." <laughs> I've lived a life where I used to forgive my partner every day and with time ikakuwa mazoea eventually we had to separate because I could not take it anymore should we live with such a person just because we have to forgive eh yeah hata nikurushia tu wewe hata ningependa aseme maybe did she find someone else who is now better not, uh, yeah better who you don't have to forgive every day i think as human beings we need to <laughs> that's true yeah The grass is never green on yeah, the other side. Yeah, we need to acknowledge that since Adam and Eve in the garden, since they ate that fruit, sin entered into us. Yeah. And from that moment, we became as weak as that's not how God had meant it to be. And therefore, we became angry, selfish. Mm. Everything we do most of the time, you know that last time we used the verse that the heart of man is deceptive. Mm. Someone can even be very nice to you, but they are very deceptive mm -hmm. and you will not detect it. So don't get into a relationship expecting that this is an angel that they will never make mistakes. Mm. In fact, the person who hurts you the most is the one that is closest to you. They will say something nasty, they will do something you don't like. Yeah. And so you have to realize where I'm with. They have weaknesses just like me. Yeah. Show mercy and you will receive mercy. Mm. If you show uh, sorry, if you show judgment and criticism and resentment when you need it back one day, you will get the same measure that you gave to somebody else. Right. So I don't know whether she moved on and found someone better, but we will always have people who will hurt us. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow, someone else says, "Thank you pastor, you've really touched me. We have the same problem with my wife. She's always and constantly reminding me of my past mistakes." Um Houston here says, "My question is, what if you are the partner who tries his best to graduate that class, but it has almost been impossible and your partner doesn't seem to understand you? What should you do?" Um so those two obviously quite related uh that they've been maybe making an effort it's taking a little longer um than their partner would like uh, and they're sort of being judged for it now yeah uh, how, how but what's the, what's the honest way of actually managing that in a relationship you know because as you've said we're human beings if if we, if this is something we've been talking about for a very long time like how patient am i supposed to be exactly the way the word sounds it's patience and then there's a verse that says that love endures long <laughs> we don't want that mm. no we don't want that if i forgive you of um, uh, maybe cheating yesterday and maybe it's been your problem for before you got married you had that problem you to sleep around it was an addiction mm. and you're trying to come out and stop it someone to for you to change someone will really need to be patient with you because you, you they don't know your history your background and why you used to do what you used to do mm. love suffers long mm. in fact there's a that it says that love suffers long it is long suffering so if you're not going to get in for long suffering and endurance it's going to be very hard for you we mm. want love that is quick and transforming every day but the moment you committed to love this person you signed a contract to be and endure their weaknesses mm -hmm. and you know if you truly love that person Jesus said that love never fails the reason it doesn't fail is because you're willing to endure certain things solomon said that love covers a multitude of sins mm -hmm. not two sins not three it covers a multitude that means every day there are some even sins you do to one another you'll not even be able to deal with right. just cover them and move on yeah. and keep the main thing the main thing have goals as a couple that keep you moving forward. Right. If you keep reminding each other of weaknesses, you lose the vision. And that is so important. Maybe that's a, a show I need to do at some point. Goal setting as a couple. Yes. Cuz if you are not aligned as yes. far as where you're headed and what yeah. is most important, you're going to be so frustrated and your relationship is never fresh because you just feel like, "Ah, oh, great." Tiring, but don't worry about kitanda. <laughs> like you again you yes, know what i mean but yeah. there's no like there's passion no there's no excitement yeah absolutely maybe yeah. we need to do that show but um i want to also share with us yes. you know some other examples of score keeping in relationships and yeah. this is a story that is told you know over say a couple and it could be you guys 
it says the first partner says i bought you that expensive shirt for your birthday and i've never even seen you wear it once sounds familiar yes. <laughs> and then partner two says well i gave you an expensive gym membership and you've never even gone so that makes us even equal, equal. And then partner one says, but I didn't ask you for a gym membership. Partner two says, well, I didn't ask you for the T-shirt. <laughs> um, and then partner one says, then you should have told me. After all the sacrifices yes. I've yes. made for you. Yes. Up or two, okay, scare your word. Yeah. Then you know things are going downhill. <laughs> all the sacrifices I've yes. made for you. Yes. And I think very subconsciously in a lot of our relationships, we, we pull out that card. Um and uh and i think as we talk about scorekeeping there's also a very real sort of feeling that that just kind of comes to life as far as relationships are really about giving it is and you will give more than you expected to give you will give more than you feel you should give <laughs> and you will and often give giving more than you giving. receive yes yeah and a lot of people i think struggle with that and maybe that's where we begin to see relationships go wrong because we've not found peace with that. We've not found peace with that understanding that that is, in essence, what a loving, sacrificial relationship is. Yes. We got in because we kept hearing that it's 50-50. So you give, I give. But um, I think it's Paul who said it's more blessed to give than, than to, receive. to receive. When you are used to giving, when giving is a grace, it stops being a problem to you. Mm. that you realize that um and, and i think our children are the best example mm -hmm. we keep giving them good things wisdom advice take them to school mm -hmm. of course you do expect one day they will become great in life but even if they don't become that you did your best for those 18 years you kept giving without getting tired mm -hmm. because you're going somewhere but when it comes to one another, you are like, you, you're mature. You, you should understand that if I give you, you should give me something back. Yeah. If that happens, it's okay. And it's, it's actually encouraged to do that. Mm. Don't just be the one receiving, be the one giving. Right. So if your wife is giving you, also commit yourself to giving. Mm. But not every relationship is like that. You'll find that one gives 80%, receives 20 mm. How do they live like that for 50 years? It's having peace with yourself yeah. that I'm actually blessed giving. Yeah. If this guy doesn't change, I will stand before God and be like, God, I gave my best. Yeah. Even if I move out of this and go to another relationship, there are no guarantees right. that I'll, I'll get something different from that. And I think those people who live in their marriages that long and are able to celebrate that, even if one is giving, because you're right, it's not always 50-50. It's it's, in fact, maybe it's rarely 50-50. And there could be seasons where it's 50-50, then the next one, you're giving more yes. than she is or yes. she's giving more. You know, look at COVID and what that has done to incomes in, in homes. But I think one of the biggest dangers then as far as this whole scorekeeping vibe is essentially you're working yourself, you're destroying your own team. Because by scorekeeping, as you mentioned earlier, it's a competition, right? Because you're keeping track of who is ahead of the other. Yes. Which means there has to be a winner and there has to be a loser. It's no longer a team effort. So you're destroying your relationship yeah. by your own hands. And one is hurting. And I think people can work. People can have a good time with one another. If, as you said, if you keep the main thing, the main thing, then you always realize that wherever we are going together, we will need to now, if, uh, for, and it's good you have that show, as you said, if you have these goals that you're working towards, then even that giving and taking becomes more constant. Mm -hmm. Because assuming we're working on a project, there's something you'll bring in as my wife, I'll bring in as a husband, and we are working towards it. Mm. But if we're always fighting one another, then you realize now you have to remember, but yesterday I forgive you, and yesterday yeah. you didn't come home, yeah. or yesterday you didn't do this for me. Yeah. And you keep going around the same mountain, mm. and you lose the... So you'll find a husband has gone to another town, done projects, maybe with another Chile, They've achieved stuff with another lady and they are doing projects because they agree yeah. more. And you, you are here, you're still nagging and complaining and you're losing. So as for as long as you don't see yourself as 
working as a team. As a team. That whole me I give 80 and you only do 20 is always going to be a it factor. It will be there. But for as long as you say tunenda pamoja. Tunenda pamoja. The same way the body doesn't look at us and say, "Oh, you know, my yeah. pinky is only this small, yet yes. you know the quadriceps are the biggest yeah. muscle." <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. All of them function together yes. to 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 help you be a full and complete person. And I guess that's the way we need to look at that's relationships. That's the way you need to look at it. Yeah. And we love football, we love games. The way a team works, we all want to score. Mm. So it doesn't matter whether you are the goalkeeper, you are the striker, the midfielder. We are all facing we the, all same facing the same whether direction. Whether we are Kombele or Yeah, so at the time may pass the wrong move right now, next time it will pass four yeah. and we will score. And even if we lose, we lose as a team. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yes. Um, some someone here is saying sometimes people take opportunities to make more mistakes when we forgive. Okay, Nani, who are people? <laughs> who are people dating? They are nasty. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, mwingine anasema I totally disagree pastor na si kwa ubaya but kuna wenye that's who they are cheaters yes. and liars and so it's not a one time thing people need to change when they say they are changing and some are not ready and in that case when you feel you deserve better you bounce off for how long will you sit and wait and that's what needs leads to murder oh wow and so forth okay um, hey Joyce, I'm Benedict. I had a girlfriend whom I kept forgiving. Hey, all of these questions are about forgiveness. Um, loving, gifting, and appreciating. Thinking that I would be the best. Aki, believe you me, I met my heartbreak message very, very early in the morning. Guy, kwa message? Savage. <laughs> and from that, I never loved anyone. I feel like I cannot face the same again. <sighs> life life and clearly he, this forgiveness gave, one is a, is a is a big one he gave and if we were to judge him he did his best yeah but you cannot you cannot make the other person become what you want mm. you have this image of this is the way i want my wife to be in 10 years if she doesn't there is a couple they're, they're not yet married and they said we want to get married in 2023 when our finances are okay and everybody's working, have an income. And I ask them, what if that never happens? What if we never reach that uh, maybe two million goal? Mm. Does that mean you guys will never get married? You've already set a standard mm. that both of you have to meet. So this guy, you, you've given your best. You didn't get it back. What else do you do? Forgive right. yourself, move on. Yeah. If you get someone else, we thank God. And because you see what he did to him. Mm, I don't want to trust to love again. again. And, that, and I was just about to say that I think it's very important that we learn not to let our circumstances change the good in us. Yes. Right? So you did a good thing, Benedict. Yeah. You, you, I mean, you, you'll be rewarded you did the right thing. So don't, you know, despise yourself or, or put yourself down for doing the right thing. The issue is the other person, not, not you. Not you. And so that when you get into your next relationship, um, you're still going to do the right thing and even better. I think the problem is when we do this, we kind of carry that baggage into the next relationship. Mm, my, and my we former. realize that we've been like just decreasing ourselves. We've been at 100. Yeah. But by the time you end up at your next relationship because of your bitterness and doubt and anxiety, you're at like a 70. You're so broken to pieces. So yeah. you, you're not whole. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Someone else says, good morning, Joyce. This topic is really hitting home. My nine-year marriage is on its deathbed because oh, no. of the things you're talking about in studio. I feel wasted, and I'm asking for prayers and grace to get through this hardest period right. of my life. Right. There are people who are literally in the midst of this right now, and maybe this scorekeeping has gone on already. This conversation is almost a little too late for them. It's gone on for such a long time that you know, maybe they have the same sentiments like, and yeah, I don't know how we're going to resuscitate this thing. What would be your encouragement to this one? Uh, nine years, that she's tried. Mm. They fought every battle they could fight, but it's not too late. Yeah. I would say it's not too late. They, there is counseling, you can look for someone to talk to. Because I also realized some of the things we struggle with in our marriages, if we, there was someone else working with us, mm. first you realize you're not unique, your mm -hmm. weaknesses are not just you, Someone else has almost similar things. Mm -hmm. And so have someone you can talk to, open up to. Try all options possible before you say it's over. Yeah. The same way you started, you had a committee, you talked to your parents, your pastors before you got married. Before you say it's quit, 
try all that whole cycle talk to somebody mm. some of the things my wife and i have overcome it's because we were open to someone mm. and someone was willing to walk with us it wasn't a one day thing it's every day mm -hmm. so and for nine years it means she's endured long yeah but there's still some grace in her there's some love in her and there's hope even for the partner right if at some point they really don't want to change you would have done your best and i believe when you stand before god you say lord i did my best if they are not changing they are still cheating they are still violent then we have other options but mm. try your best talk to somebody involve maybe your best couple your pastor or, some, or a counselor if mm. it is those serious serious things that make people separate mm -hmm. and we pray that theirs will not end up in divorce we Absolutely. do pray it doesn't end up in divorce Absolutely. in jesus name amen to amen. that Wow, Pastor Moses, thank you so much for coming on to the show today. Amen. Great conversation with you. And right. uh, certainly I hope that people um, would be challenged, you know, even for those of you who are single, hoping to be in a relationship at some point, uh, start asking yourself whether you're that type of friend who's a scorekeeper. Yeah. <laughs> because we're just giving you a tip right now. You will ruin your own relationship by your own words and your own actions. Um, and to those of you who are dating, to those of you who are married, the same thing as well. Love has to be sacrificial. I think that's the beauty of it. And love hurts. And love hurts. Love does hurt. That's why love is a choice, <laughs> not a feeling. So you people who wake up today, you're in love with this one. By lunchtime, you're in love with that other person. Eh, eh, out. Just <laughs> next WhatsApp group. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> next. <laughs> Left. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pastor Moses. Yes, yes. Joyce. With that Thank said, you for guys, me. you're most welcome. You're yes. most welcome. Yes. Um, do you want to share your handles, by the way, in case someone wants to reach you? Yeah, on Facebook, Moses Blessed. You'll see my photo there holding a book. On Twitter, Moses Gashugi. And on Instagram, Moses Blessed. All right. Yes. Okay, guys, we'll be back after this. <laughs>